Welcome to Africa 54. Thanks for having me. It's a delight. You're currently attending a conference about AI and health. Tell us what this uh, conference is all about. This is uh, a conference or a meeting being organized by United Nations Global Initiative on AI for Health. So this is an initiative that came out from an earlier one, which was a partnership between WHO, so World Health Organization, and the ITU. The first meeting is being co-hosted by the government of uh, Saudi Arabia. And so what the objective has been for years was the group creating global standards that guide, you know, the regulation of AI for health, the building, the use, the benchmarking of AI for health. We've had the pleasure of working with you on different regulatory bodies from FDA, US, NHS in the UK and all the others to look at a global framework when it comes to AI for health. And so in this new phase, we are now focused more on implementation of projects within AI for health, but still with that global landscape in it. So this is uh, our first meeting and, you know, we are having all sort of interesting discussions on how do we properly ensure that AI for health works for humanity. Uh, so how do we do that in a way that we enjoy the benefits, but then we also make sure that we are proactive to minimize the risks that are involved in using this powerful technology to address a very, very important aspect of our society, healthcare. There's been a lot of uh, talk about uh, regulating AI, and I'm glad to hear that uh, uh, people in that space are finally working out a regulatory uh, framework that can uh, 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 that can regulate uh, this AI. From where you stand, uh, what are the key issues that you guys are trying to address? The risks are more practical in things that have to do with bias, fairness, uh, because, you know, we are building the systems with data. But human society has been unfair to certain demographics. If you're looking at it from an age perspective, gender perspective, racial perspective, or more broadly, ethnicity, nationality. So if we pick this data and we build AI systems off of that data, they might further propagate these biases we've had in society. But what makes this group different is that, you know, collectively, everyone will talk about risk. And then when you ask them what's the solution, they will tell you ethical AI framework we should make AI more fair, make AI more transparent, make AI more trustworthy. These are beautiful ideals. No one would disagree with you. But the question is, how do you technically do that? One of the things I contributed to the group is this idea called precision evaluation. So usually when you test an AI system, you would say, oh, my AI system scored 90%. But the question is, 90% on who exactly? Like, for example, we ourselves, we got our AI systems approved by Ghana FDA, and we made sure that the data that we submitted to FDA, the details about the project and everything, we did it based on the standard of some of the work that we do. And you know, UN is basically at its best set up to do exactly this, to coordinate initiatives globally. When I've moved around across Africa, the one thing that I see that most uh, healthcare systems lack or the, uh, the hospitals lack is access uh, to data sometimes you as a patient you go in uh they write on a piece of paper they uh, they give you that piece of paper once you lose it that's it there is no record that you even showed up at that hospital how can you leverage ai uh, or other tools uh, to make that system efficient so you've actually highlighted one of the major issues right we generate a lot of health data but we are not storing them. In AI, we have uh, optical character recognition, sometimes called OCR. So you can just use any imaging technology. You can either, let's say, scan the document or even just take photo of the document, if you will, and then use an AI system to read the handwritings and convert them to digital formats, digitizing this data and then creating a very huge AI system that can then make sense of, we are talking about several tens of millions and hundreds of millions of records at this point. Uh, the insight that is hidden in there is probably beyond you know, our expectation at this point.